Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord, we bless your name, the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, the greatest name that is given, that is named among men. He said there is no greater name than the name of Jesus, and that at his name every knee, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. And that's a blessing to be able to have faith in the name of Jesus Christ, to know that you can go on your knees or sit down or wherever you are and you can pray and you can ask something in that holy name, the name of Christ, and God will hear you. And God will answer and God will bless. And He has and He will continue to because that's who He is. Amen? Amen. I want to read to you tonight from the book of Second Samuel. Chapter 5, and I'll read um, verse 17 through 21, I think. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hold. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver them. Deliver the Philistines into thine hand. And David came to Beel Perazim, and David smote them there, and said, The Lord had broken forth upon mine enemies before me, as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Be Beel Perazim. And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. And I want to use um, verse 19 as our text. It said there, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand. And use that part where God answered him and said, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver deliver them into your hands. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I want to preach in a message entitled, God will do it. There's no doubt about it. God will do it. Amen. Let's look to God in prayer, ask His blessing upon the service tonight, ask His blessing upon the message, and may the Lord use it for His glory, and may the Lord bless us through His word tonight. Amen. Would you pray? You don't have to stand, you can just pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm preaching tonight about God will do it. The answer that God gave to David was very reassuring. I will say even it was the answer that David wanted. Because he prayed and he asked God, God, are you going to give me victory in this situation? Is what he was asking God. Will you give me the victory over this situation? Will you give me the victory over my enemies? And God said, go up, for I will doubtless do it. <laughs> what a comforting thing to hear from God. To know that uh, God will stand by those that uh, inquire of Him. Those that trust in Him. Those that seek the face of the Lord. Those that come to God in their time of trouble. And in their time of battles, if you will, and hardship and difficulties. To know that when they come to God and they pray and say, God, will you help me with this? And to hear the voice of God said, without a shadow of doubt, you know I will help you. Isn't that something wonderful tonight? Yeah. And that's what he was telling David. There's no doubt about it. David, I got your back. You just go up and I will give you the victory over your enemies. You see, when a person has a genuine relationship with God, and God is pleased with their life, there is no doubt about God 
whether he will intervene in their life or whether he will bless them or not. If you have a genuine relationship with God and you believe the Lord and you are sold over to the Lord in service and worship and everything, there is no doubt about it. God will do it for you also. Amen. Amen. There is no doubt about it. God will bless you also. He told Cain that. He said, Cain, don't you understand if you do good that you will be accepted also? See, God wasn't showing partiality to Cain and Abel. He, he, he accepted Abel's sacrifice because Abel did things God's way. And Abel was willing to give God what God wanted. But because Cain was so self-willed and self-centered and wanted to do things his own way, the Lord rejected him. And when he come before the Lord and complain and, and whine about his God rejecting him and his offering, God said, hey, it's not hard. He said, you want to be accepted? Just do right. You want me to do it for you also? Just follow in Abel's uh, uh, footstep. Just do what Abel is doing. Abel is doing things my way. If you do it in my way also, I will do it for you also. Amen. And so here we find that David was a man after God's own heart and the Lord had chosen him to be the new ruler of Israel because King Saul wasn't uh, one that liked to do things God's way. He didn't like to follow God's instructions. You know, K King Saul is like a lot of people today, you know, um, I'm just going to do it my way, and, uh, and, and if God is displeased, then I will offer a sacrifice, and God will be pleased with that. <laughs> but God, that's not what God wanted. God wanted him to follow his commandments. God wanted Saul to do it. His way, God's way, and Saul will not do that. So the Bible said the Lord rejected him from being king, and he raised up David, a man who was in some sense, I will say, you know, physically and, 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 and material-wise, wasn't as good as Saul. He wasn't as tall and strong as Saul was, and he didn't have a whole lot of money. He was a poor shepherd boy. But God saw something in David. He saw a heart in this man, a heart for God, a heart to do things God's way. And so the Lord raised him up to be king. And now that after many trials and tribulations and persecutions and running for his life and everything, finally God brought him to that place where God can anoint him king or God can give him full control over the nation. And as soon as God did that, as soon as God gave David his rightful place as king over Israel, guess what happened? Satan got mad. <laughs> right? As soon as God is getting ready to bless David, the devil got to messing, as the old saying goes. When God goes to blessing, the devil goes to messing. Right? When God is getting ready to do something good in our life, uh, Satan wants to come in and throw up his roadblocks and his, uh, his, um, his, his walls and his, uh, his temptations and his battles and his lies and his deceptions and his discouragements and all kind of things, all his arrows. He wants to cast at us at, at the same time while when God is getting ready to bless us. And so here God is getting ready to bless David and, and the Philistines uh, begin to show up. <laughs> Uh, they, they weren't, they weren't, David was living in their land for years in Achish or in the land in Achish, you know, Achish being their king and stuff like that. They didn't bother with David. He was living in their land and, and they didn't think about messing with him or, 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 or troubling him or anything like that. But as soon as God made him king, the Philistines came out. And he said there in our text, he said, but when the Philistine, or, or verse 17, but when the Philistines heard that they had anointed, they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came out to seek David. When he said to seek David, he wasn't saying they're coming, hey, oh man, David is king, let's go say hi to him, right? Let's go congratulate him and let's go bring a blessing to him and say, well, David, you're king now. We just want to, you know, have peace with you and all that stuff. That's not what he was saying. They went out to seek him in battle. Maybe they remembered how David destroyed their champion, Goliath, and they were seeking revenge, right? Or maybe they were saying, well, you know, David is a new king. Let's go test him and see what he's made out of. But what I didn't realize was, uh, unlike Saul, David was a man that loved God. David was a man that cared about God. David was a man who inquired what God's will is for his life. 
And so when they came out to, to set their battle in array, they were probably no doubt expecting David to come out right away and fight. But instead, the Bible said David went to prayer. <laughs> Amen. He went to prayer in verse 19. He said, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said, Go. God gave him the, the go ahead. He said, go ahead, David. You pray. You're seeking my help. You want me to, to get in there and help you? God said, I will do it. You need my help. I will do it for you. I will help you. You are getting my direction and my counsel and my guidance and my help to fight your battles. You can rest assured, David, I will do it. I will give you victory over your enemies. I will cause these Philistines to run out of your land because you are trusting in me and you're seeking my help and that's the way God sees us tonight if we are looking to God for help without a shadow of doubt God will do it for us amen God will help us God will place uh, uh, his blessings upon our life at the same time while he's running our enemies away from us amen, amen. Well, we got to seek the Lord David seek the Lord and God said Without a doubt. He said, I'll do it for you. I will do it for you. He went to, to pray. You see, he was different from Saul. Saul didn't see God in prayer. He just, oh, the enemy is coming. Let me go fight them. He just go in a fight. That one, well, he went one, when he really decided to seek the Lord at the latter end of his life, at that point he had gone so far to where God will not even answer his prayer. And so he went and found a witch, a woman with a familiar spirit. And, you know, and, 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 and stuff like that. How far, you know, a man that was anointed, how far he, he fell, how, how low he fell, I should say, that he will go to a witch doctor, if you will, <laughs> to get an answer. We see David decide, you know what, I'm going to start this thing out right. I'm going to start this thing out right. I am king in Israel. I'm the leader of this nation. Whenever something comes up, I will turn to God. Amen. I will turn to God. And so he did, and God helped him. He went to pray, and should I go up against these Philistines? Will thou give me victory over them? God's answer, go up. Doubtless I will give, them, I will give you the victory in this battle. You see, there is no doubt about it tonight when it comes to God answering and helping those that trust in him. The first thing we want to look at tonight is deliverance, help, and anything else we need from God. God will do it if we go to Him first, right? God will do it if we go to Him first. If we come to the Lord just like David did, the enemy is coming, this battle is raging, the enemy assemble themselves and they're coming against me. The first thing David did was he went to God in prayer. He went to God in prayer and God said, well, David, you are trusting in me. You're coming to me first. You're bringing your cares and your problems to me and asking me to get involved. As the Bible said, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths, right? He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And so that's what David was doing, trusting in God with all his heart and seeking guidance and counsel from the Lord. And because of that, God said, I will do it for you. I will give you the victory. I will defeat these uh, uh, your enemies and I will make you one that they will be afraid of. Uh, even when they come again, they will always remember David was the one that defeated us uh, from the very beginning because he trusted in the Lord uh, and he was willing to seek God's help. Uh, I was reading today in, um, in the book of 2 Kings, I think it was, when uh, the Syrians, or the Assyri I think it was Assyria, or Syrians, whoever it is, was coming into Israel, into, into Judah, and they wanted to destroy that, uh, that nation. And King um, Hezekiah was the king at that time. And you know, there's no such thing as generational curse. You know, I don't know why people believe something that stupid. Because your parent was poor, you have to be poor. Because your parent was this, you have to be this. There's no such thing. Amen? Yeah. All that seek the Lord will find mercy and grace. Right, and so I said it because this man came from, his father was a very wicked king. Very wicked king, and he did all kind of evil in the sight of the Lord. But here is this young man, or he took the, became king at the age of 26. 
And the Bible said he did things that was right in the sight of the Lord. If there was a generational curse, wouldn't he have followed the same footpath, in the same footstep of his parents? But no, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And he was doing right and he was cleaning up the nation of, of Judah. He's cleaning up that part of the nation of Israel and doing things right and breaking down the altars and, and all the things that, that the people had set up under his father, all the idolatry and stuff like that. He began to clean house and to make it right in the sight of God. And while he was doing right and serving God and doing, and doing what God wanted him to do, the Syrians came, right? Every time you're trying to do something good, the devil wants to stir things up. Every time you're trying to do something good for God, the enemy wants to come in and put in his two cents. And so he come up with all these threats against uh, um, uh, Hezekiah and his people and bragging about all his victories and how he destroyed this nation and that nation and all the other nations and their gods and everything. And he said, don't think that uh, you can escape from us. Uh, don't think that you can be strong enough to defeat the king of Assyria. Either Assyria or Syria, one of them, right? Don't think that you can do that. But what he didn't realize was he was coming to a king that knew how to pray. He was coming to a king that knew how to see God. And the Bible said Hezekiah went to the temple and all the letters that were sent to him from the enemy, he took all these letters and he spread it out and he began to pray and began to seek God and said, God, look at what they're saying. Look at these letters and look at all these things that they're trying to do to bring up all these threats against against you and to blaspheme your name and God said Hezekiah don't you worry I will let him hear a rumor and he will depart from your land and when he go back to his own land he will die in that land amen God gave King Hezekiah the victory because he was willing to seek God amen he was willing to bring his battles to the Lord he was willing to bring his challenges to God he was willing to get on his knees and pray and seek the help of God and because he did that God said I will do it for you also thank God that when we bring our battles to the Lord when we bring our challenges to God when we bring our cares and concern to God God will do it for us also Amen. God will help us just like he did for all that have brought their their cares to him now you read on a little bit more there in in chapter 5, we'll pick up at verse uh, 22. Because God, David destroyed, or, or 23, 22, 23. No. <laughs> we'll read 21 again. How about it? It doesn't matter. And, and, or 22. Let's go to 22. <laughs> 21 was when the, he burned all their images and everything. But you see, the enemy decided, you know what? We'll give this another try. What I'm trying to say is they didn't realize they were going against a king that knew how to pray. Right? They're going against a man that knew how to call on God. And that's the message tonight. God will do it if we will pray and seek Him, right? Yeah. He will do it for us if we will seek Him in prayer. He said in verse 22, And the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up. Listen to that, right? So the first time they came, God said, go up. I will doubtless give you the victory. You know, what if David hadn't prayed and said, well, I won the last battle. Let me go up and do it again this time. See, God was going to give him the victory, but it wasn't going to be the same way. Right? God had a different instruction for him this time. And thank God he prayed. Thank God he inquired of the Lord. And he said, God, he, the Bible said he inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said, thou shall not go up, but... But fetch a compass behind them and come up, upon, come up upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, then, that then thou shalt bestir thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so as the Lord had commanded him and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gezer. Or Gezer, how you say that, right? But listen to it. David prayed again. God will do it. But God said, I'm going to do it a different way, right? He said, go and come against, come up around them and come behind them. And he said, just stand there and wait. Wait under those mulberry trees. And when you hear that going, that sound of going in the mulberry trees, he said, stir yourself. 
bestir yourself. And he said, go. And the Bible said, when David heard the song, he said, God went out before him, right? God was doing it. God was helping him. God said, this man is praying. This man is seeking my help. This man is not trying to fight the battle in his own ability, in his own power. But David is seeking my guidance. He is seeking my help. He is seeking my direction. And now I will guide him and tell him how to do it. And when he do it my way, I will go before him. What if David hadn't done it God's way? You think God would have gone out before him? No, he would have ended up just like Saul. God would have said, all right, you want to do it your way? Go ahead. Fight your battle in your own power and see what happens. But David did it God's way. And because he did it God's way, the Bible said God did it for him. I'm preaching about God will do it. God will do it. God helped him. God helped him. Because he relied on the Lord. He relied on the Lord. The Bible, he said later on in the psalm, he said, in Psalm 34, verse 4, he said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You see, God will give us sweet victory over our, or over our enemies. He will do it for us if we seek him and seek his help. If we trust in him and trust in his power and just rely completely on the Lord. God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to proceed in this matter? How do you want me to handle this business? God will help you. Sometimes he will say go. Sometimes he will say don't go. Right? Sometimes he will say go out. No, doubtless I will, I will go out with you and defeat these enemies. Or sometimes he will say hey why don't you just do it. Fetch a compass. Hit them from a different angle. <laughs> Hit them from a direction they are not uh, expecting. Surprise attack, as it's been shared, shock and awe, right? And give them a shock and awe experience and let them see that God is still with you and fighting for you. Amen? God can give us a victory. Whatever the enemy is, or, you know, God will give us victory over it when we seek his help. In many ways, God will help us. He will help us in every situation. In every situation, in all of our problems, in all of our battles, in life together. He said, Preacher, you don't know what I'm dealing with right now. I'm dealing with this and dealing with that. Will God do it for me? Well, hear the message tonight. God will do it. Are you a Christian? Are you a God-fearing person? Do you believe the Lord? Do you have faith in God? He said, Seek the Lord and He will do it for you. Amen. He will do it for you, just like he did it for David. David wanted God's help. You see, whatever the enemy is, God will give us victory over it. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You say, my, my enemy is pride, preacher. I can't bring myself to, 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 to surrender my life fully or completely to God. I still have that, that pride is keeping me from, from um, doing what God wants me to do. Hey, God can help you with that. My, my thing, preacher, is I'm afraid to lift my hands and worship God in church. That's my, that's my hang-up. God can help you to break that. Amen? That's pride. That's pride. He said, I will therefore the man pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubt. Amen? And, and, and I think it's a, it's a matter of God testing our, our humility. You know, our humility. Are we willing to just go like this in, in a crowd? And worship God. I did that one time and I got so many looks. I was in Kuwait in the desert. In the desert. And the chaplain was having a tent service. And he had a lot of people. I mean, all these soldiers came out. And he was a good chaplain. A very good chaplain. I still remember a lot of the messages he preached and stuff like that. And, um, well, you know, all these soldiers was there. And I'm standing up front and getting ready to start church. And I just lift my hand. I just lift my hand. I'm worshiping God and praising God and everything. And all these look. All these people looking. Well, you guess what? I was the shame. <laughs> I was a shame. I was worshiping God because I know what the Bible said. God can help us. He'll do it for us, but we got to be willing to humble ourselves. And then the, the, the chaplain said, anybody want to stand up and testify? Or testify? <laughs> Not testify. Testify. And I stood up. I was like, I was sitting there first. I was like, what would the Apostle Paul do in a situation like this? <laughs> and right behind me was the, 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 the man in charge. I don't know if it was a general or a Colonel or whatever he was. Uh, or, no, he was in front of me. I was behind him. And, you know, all these big wigs and everything. You know, it was in the, in the, cha in the chapel service and in the tent service. And I stood up, just like Paul would do. 
and I beckoned with my hand. <laughs> I was just young. I was like 20 years old. <laughs> and I said, I want to thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. That's all I said. And this, this, um, this colonel, he was in charge of the whole uh, thing. He turned and he looked at me like that. I mean, and, and I said, who in the world is stand up and testify about the blood? <laughs> Usually people stand up and testify. I want to thank God for healing my broken toe or something like that. <laughs> who is it standing up and testifying that they want, God, they want to thank God for the blood of Jesus? But I was thankful for the blood of Jesus. Amen. I was thankful that God saved me. I was thankful for God changing me. And of course, I didn't know a whole lot, but that's who, that's who God wants. Sometimes God liked them Christian that doesn't know a whole lot, but have a whole lot of zeal. Man, I was setting, I was setting captain, and, and, and I, was, I, was like, I, was like a, I was like a young, I was a young Christian in the midst of all these vicious wolves. They, they were mad at me, I mean, over and over again, because I was, I was testifying of God, and all these chaplains, and, and colonel, and captains, and everything, they didn't like it. <laughs> they cornered me, <laughs> or, and not cornered me, but... Had me right there in the, in, in the, in the, in the mess hall and questioning me. 20-year-old specialist with all these brass and, and, and colonel and captain and everything because uh, I was standing up for God. And I wasn't compromising. And I wasn't bending to their ways and everything. And, and they were asking me all these questions about this and that, about the Bible. And I was just straight shooting. <laughs> straight shooting. But God was there with me. Amen. Yeah. God was there with me and, 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 and He was helping me to confound all those who wanted to compromise the truth of God. And He was a young Christian, 20 years old, testifying to them the truth and, and, and just, just telling them about Jesus the right way. Amen. And so we can't, whatever the enemy is, God will do it. If we're willing to seek the help of God. You come to, to the instrument tonight. Paul got the sweet victory over the flesh. What, what, is your, what is your challenge tonight? David had the enemies. His enemies were the Philistines. His enemies were the armies of the Philistines coming to destroy him and to destroy his people. What are your enemies tonight? What is it that you are as, as, a, as, as an enemy to you? Is it fear? Are you, is, is your enemy fear? Can God not help you to overcome fear? Did He not say that He's given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind? But He hasn't given us a spirit of fear, right? What is your enemy? Is it, is it pride to where you can show forth your Christianity to all? God can help you with that. You say, preacher, mine is this discouragement and doubts. Uh, that, that's my enemy. It gets me every time. Doubt in this and being discouraged and and everything. We all face these things a certain time in our life. But what is yours? What is, what, is, what is your enemy tonight? Cannot God help you also like He helped David? Cannot God help you also like He helped Hezekiah and all those that put their trust in Him? What is your enemy? Paul said this in Romans chapter 7, verse 24 and 25. He said, O wretched man that I am. He said, Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Paul spoke about an enemy that is trying. He said, every time I will seek to do good, he said, evil, evil was there present. He had a battle. He had a struggle that he was, he was facing and he wanted to serve God. He said, he delights in the inward man after the law of God. But he said, I found another law that was warring against me trying to bring me into captivity. And then he said, he said, oh, wretched man. He said, who's going to help me? I'm saying, God will do it. <laughs> right? who, who will deliver me? God will do it. Who will help me? God will do it. Who's going to give me victory over my life, over my, my, my own self-destructive uh, ways? God can and God will. Who's going to help me to get to that place in my life where I said, Jesus, I, I've been hearing all these things about you, but I, I want to give my life to you. Who's going to help me to take that step and surrender it all to God? God will. Amen. God will. So, so let's trust in the Lord tonight and, and understand that God is able to help us. As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reference to the Lord, God will do it. He did it for David. He did it for all that believe in him. I know tonight He can do it for us also. 
don't let anything stop you from being and doing what God is calling on your life to do. Don't let fear cripple you and talk you out of anything. Don't let Satan lie to you and whisper lies in your ears and telling you, well, you can't do that. Man, if that's the case, none of us will do anything because he lies to everybody. But if we trust in God, God will do it. God will make a way. God will bless you and he will help you and give you the victory over everything. Father, thank you for your word tonight. I preach it in your name. Now, Father, I pray that you use it for your glory. I thank you and give you all the praise tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's spend some time in prayer. She's saying, God will do it for you also. Amen. Thank God for our midweek service. Thank God for our Savior Jesus Christ. And I remember service Sunday morning at 11. And pray and come. You say, Preacher, can I come early? Yeah, come. I'll be here. We can pray. Amen. <laughs> we can pray and see God. And then we pray together. Who knows what God will do, right? You know, we can pray. We can make Sunday morning a, a, a time of prayer. And like I said, come on, have a cup of coffee, whatever. And then. Let's have church. And let's watch, watch God work in our life and bless us as we serve Him. And um, So we'll look forward for that and all God will do. God bless you. And God will do it. 
God will do it for us if we seek Him and trust Him. Father, thank you for the service tonight. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. And we ask for your continual guidance and blessing in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.